This week on Rugby League Down South, the coach of Hemel Stags talks about topping the table, details of a £5,000 bursary being offered at the University of Gloucestershire All Golds. South Wales Scorpions winger Dalton Grant talks about their first home win of the season and praise for Southern Schools from the Scotland coach, Steve McCormack. Sorry, no uh, Broncos specific stuff for you in particular this week, uh, although there's a fair few mentions of them uh, throughout the programme, their players and the work that they're doing as well in this week's content. I'll get you some uh, specific stuff, though, over the next few weeks. It's been a little bit busy at the moment, uh, so I haven't managed to get any Bronco stuff for this week, but I promise we'll get some uh, over the next few weeks. And a bit of news for you as well. Plans uh, for BBC London to broadcast the Bradford and Wigan games uh, on the radio. So if you're heading down to the Stoop for the game... Uh, the Cup game Friday night against Bradford um, and the uh, Super League game against Wigan uh, then hopefully you can take your radio along you can listen to coverage uh, from the Stoop on BBC London 94.9 thanks as well for the emails and the tweets during the week uh, rldownsouth at gmail.com if you want to uh, send an email rldownsouth at gmail.com always good to read your thoughts and on Twitter uh, at Ian Ramsdale or using using the hashtag RLDS for, of course, Rugby League down south. So to Hemel, top of Championship 1 then, three wins from three. It's all going well then, isn't it, for coach Troy Perkins? Yeah, it's been a great start. I couldn't couldn't ask for, for, uh, for many more from the boys. Um, three from three. Um, you know, we we got the we got the win down at Scholars, which was which was a you know great achievement because Scholars are a quality team. And to go their first first game of the season and get a result was was really pleasing. And then um, and then we've had two home games against um, against Gateshead, which we snatched it at the death, and then Gloucester. So yeah, it's been it's been a pretty kind start to us really in regards to the draw with we haven't had to travel far to scholars and, and obviously two home games so yeah it's been a good start but we can't get carried away with with um with anything yet because we've obviously got to play a lot of tough teams yet and um and it starts this week against oxford um who, who you know have recruited really well and and um you know got a lot of uh players of, of of, um, that have played at this level for a long time so this will be a really good gauge on, on, on how we're going as a team Which of the three results so far this season have you been most impressed with? Yeah it's hard really I mean I think the Scholars one we played we probably played um, our best footy that day and, and as I said like we you know we were going down there you know, knowing that if we, we, we played to you know play to our best for a chance of getting the result. Um, but you know, to win by, you know, twenty points or so is um was was a you know, was a massive achievement for the club, especially in its first ever game. So I'd have to say, um, that win's probably the, the, the most pleasing. However, you know, on the flip side the gate said victory when we're behind with ten minutes to go, um, to claw our way back and then um, and then kick a, a field goal to win the game in the last couple of minutes was also pleasing. So they've been they've been sort of different games really. In the scholars we you know, we were in front for the whole game whereas Gates said it was sort of tit for touch for most of the game and, and, and we got the victory at the end. So we so character in, in, in all our games really. And just looking at your fixtures as well, obviously, you know, eight games into the season and you'll have played everyone and that's sort of like uh, mid towards the end of June. I guess then the table will start to uh, take more shape in terms of how it's going to look towards the end of the year. But, I mean, what, Oxford away next, then, you know, tough game against uh, hosting Oldham, but then South Wales Scorpions. So by the end of May, you know, you could still be sitting in a good, in a good position. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, we, we've um, we targeted to win all our... All, all home and away against the, um, the new club, so we've, we've already um, you know, done against Gloucester and and um, and then obviously Oxford this weekend. And yeah, I mean, you know, we, there's, no, there's no reason why we can't be five from five, six from six, really. The, you know, we're playing pretty decent, and 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 you know, the boys are performing performing you know week after week. But, but as I said, we just got to keep our, our feet on the ground. But yeah, I mean, three from three, you know. Um, you know, um, winning's a habit, so there's no reason why we can't go four from four, five from five, and and um, as you said, like we've got uh, um, we've got uh, Oldham and South Wales both at home, so home ground advantage again. So yeah, it, it, I think May's going to be a massive month for us, and and, um, and and yeah, as you said, we'll be able to gauge how we're going as a team a lot, a lot more 
um, in, after the next four games rather than, than at this moment. Your um, dual-edge halfback, Mike Bichet, um, got championship uh, one player of the week uh, last week. How good was he? Yeah, he, yeah he's, he's really good. Um, you know, we, we, he's a real good organiser. He's, um, he's not trying to take the line on, which, which is always good from a halfback. Um, his, his kicking game um, is, is pretty decent. And, uh, and he scored a couple of... Well, he scored one nice try nice individual effort and then he, he played a, a massive part in another one on the on the weekend so he's been really good because um, you know one he's, he adds that bit of quality in the halves for us and obviously he's in a good environment down at Bronco so he's fit and he's you know, he's, he's, he, you know he knows what he's doing in regards to rugby league and, and all that so yeah he's been brilliant to have him and Mason Caton Brown has, has played you know a pretty important part in in, in, um, in our start to the season so you know we're, we're thankful for Bronco Descending them our way, and hopefully they're they're benefiting with some some quality quality uh, game time with us. And if they are required sort of later in the season with Broncos, they'll be you know they'll be they'll be better prepared than if they they weren't playing anywhere because they both are um, too old for the under 19. So so we've been able to provide them with game time, and and they've provided us with some some um, some you know some quality in the team. And we've talked on, <clears throat> excuse me, many an occasion about um, sort of you know your your personal career and, and as a coach and now coaching a championship one side in this country. You know you've got a rich history of uh, of rugby league experience yourself. You were looking forward to this season getting underway. Now you're sort of fully engrossed into it. How does it feel? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's good. I mean, it feels good that we you know we've won three from three. If we'd uh, if the start had been a bit slower, it might be a bit you know it might be a bit tougher on us, but. Yeah, it's, it's been pretty good. Uh, you know, it's, it's good playing, you know, quality opposition week in, week out, going to some, some decent, you know, decent grounds and, and playing in front of some decent crowds. So it, it's been good. Um, you know, probably the toughest part, which I haven't really had in the past, is is a, a big squad and having to sort of, you know, well, trying to keep people happy and, and, and keep everyone involved, even though they're not selected. That's, that's something I haven't really had before where... In the past, you know, we, we had small squads and, and it was pretty much whoever was fit, near enough played. So, so that's probably been the hardest part, managing everyone. We've got a squad of 26 players and, and even for this weekend, I think we've got three guys injured plus your two, uh, two dual regs. So we've got, you know, 25 players available. So, so obviously there's going to be about eight blokes missing out there. So, um, so that's probably been the most challenging part, but, but it's a good thing. Um, it's a good thing. I'd rather rather be in this position than than be, you know, just picking whoever was available and whoever was fit. So that's been the toughest part. But yeah, it's, it's, it's everything I I hope for and probably a bit more, you know. Um, and and again, um, you know, once we go to you know the Crusaders and 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 go up to Rochdale and Oldham, you know, traditional clubs and stuff, and that that'll be you know a good experience. Um, you know, we we played. Wakefield Wildcats the other weekend in the Challenge Cup, and that was that was a great experience for, for all the players, but but also for me as a coach to, to to take a team to a Super League opposition and 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 you know just a whole match day experience, and and that was that was brilliant as well. So yeah, it's been it's been good. I, I can't complain. But as I said, it's you know at the at the moment we're riding high, and and I'm sure it's not going to be like that for the whole season. So so it's going to you know test. You know, test everyone out when they when there are some some tough times for the club when we are losing some games at some point and 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 um, and we we may you know have injury crisis at times. So yeah, at the moment it's alright, but but I know that um, it, it can be a lot tougher before the end of the season. And I think I'd be right in saying that you know you have ambitions to be you know a successful and a continuing head coach of a rugby league side. The, the fact that obviously you know you, you've been with Hemel and you, you joined a side and you look at the development and, and you know the work that you've done there and I know you have lots of strings to your bow and you know living in Coventry and developing other things and schools and programs and uh, all sorts of stuff. Does this give you more of a taste and more of a hope and more of a, a ground uh, you know like a footing to sort of say well you know this could be the next step of my my coaching career, you know, do you harbour ambitions to sort of progress through the ranks and, you know, one day manage, uh, coach a Super League side? <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think most coaches probably have that ambition, whether whether that's ever going to come to fruition, I don't know. But, but is you know, it closer, though, the fact that you're, you know, you're now with Hemel, you're in Championship 1, you know, you're on that ladder, it's the next step? 
Yeah, yeah. I suppose probably the hardest thing, to, to be honest, is 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 where we where we live at the moment, and and you know the, the family settled and all and all that, and you know the children are at, at school and all that kind of stuff, and to uproot the family um, would be quite difficult. So I mean, you know, there's, there's no Super League team within you know a two hour drive of where we live now, so that may you know may play a massive part as well, you know. But I mean, if if an opportunity come up, yeah, I think. Um, you know, I'll, I'll have to you know, seriously consider it because you know to, to work with elite athletes is, is, and and, um, and and coach in the Super League or, or whatever would be would be brilliant. And you know, just being an, an you know an assistant and and, um, and and learning the ropes off of an experienced coach would be great. Um, you know, I've spent a, a bit of time down at Broncos over the last couple of months and really enjoy the experience down there with with Phil Jones and, and Tony Ray and Nick Howell and. and Ben Fisher, the coaches down there, and um, you know, it's, yeah, I, I could, I could, um, you know, I, I'd be happy to, to, to sort of fit into an environment down there. But at the moment, it's 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 all concentrating on Hemel, and and um, and as I said, where where we, where we where we live in Coventry is is um, you know close to my partner's family, and and our, and you know our children um, are all settled here. So that that's. Would, would obviously be a massive, a massive decision too to uproot the family and, and move, whether that's up north or obviously you know closer to the Broncos if that sort of opportunity arose in the future. Well, it's all going well at the moment, isn't it, for Troy uh, up at the uh, Hemel Stags? Three wins from three, top of the Championship One table with uh, the uh, North Wales Crusaders, uh, favourites for the title this year, uh, going well. Um, and in, a, in the Northern Rail Cup as well, and they're going to go in the Northern Rail Bowl final, the uh, North Wales Crusaders. But uh, Hemel up there at the moment, an interesting few weeks of fixtures coming along. And it, it just dawned on you when you look at the fixtures and you see that, what, in you know six weeks' time, I know that there's only well, no, five weeks' time, isn't it? They'll, um, they'll have played sort of every side... Um, every side once I say six weeks it probably doesn't work out like that does it because uh, of weeks off playing but you see what I mean the, the season will, will, will come and go and turn around quite quickly and three wins from three for Hemel has given them a great pr- platform on which to build for the rest of the season and details in the next few weeks as well about um, a college academy which they're establishing too uh, details uh, to be confirmed uh, to me in particular along those lines but uh, news in the next couple of weeks hopefully for you here on Rugby League Down South. Now along those lines the University of Gloucestershire All Golds are offering a £5,000 bursary to aspiring Rugby League players, administrators and officials. Um, It's going to be put towards tuition fees if you want to study at the university. I've been getting a few more details if you might be interested or you know somebody who is interested and why they're doing it when talking to their chief executive, Rob Weber. Basically, what we're doing is uh, we're looking to, to generate the, uh, well, basically the next generation of, of rugby league administrators, uh, players, match officials, uh, anybody that's got a, a real interest in rugby league, we're, we're offering them uh, £5,000 uh, bursaries to be used against their tuition fees. Uh, off of a, of a Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts, whatever it is that they want to study, um, and we'll basically uh, help to fund their uh, their education, their their their, their, their further learning. So um, it's a fantastic opportunity for us to to create uh, the rugby league stars of the future. So I guess uh, to, to sort of break it down for, for people like me with a, with a fairly low uh, intellect level, um, basically people would come to the University of Gloucestershire and, and study, but you would give them some money which they can put towards their studies, and I guess you know they would be useful to you from their rugby league uh, side of things. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, uh, we've got we're looking for people that are going to study uh, sports management, uh, finance, marketing. Uh, Coaching, whatever it may be that the, the, the person is interested in, is is in, in a lot of ways irrelevant. It's it's all about trying to bring uh, rugby league fanatics to Gloucestershire and to uh, to the University of Gloucestershire, so that we can then use their their expertise in in whatever field it may be. I mean, I'm, I I study sports management and was lucky enough to to go on to to earn a scholarship at, at my own uh, my own level and. and it then enabled me to get a job in, in rugby league, and, and we're looking to to, to bring in uh, the next cohort of people that can go on to do the sorts of things that I've been lucky enough to do. 
Does anything like this uh, exist at any other universities? Uh, there's, there's, there's rugby league scholarships, absolutely. Yeah, there's uh, uh, the big universities like Leeds, Met and Loughborough offer scholarships to, to, to players. Um, I'm not aware of anybody that would offer it to match officials, uh, to, to administrators. Um, so it's, it's unique in that way. But uh, like I say, all, all we're, we're looking to do is... is we just want to we want to bring more rugby league people to the area so they can enjoy everything that Gloucestershire has to offer the Cotswolds uh, Cheltenham Regency Cheltenham which is a beautiful place and and show them that, that rugby league and Gloucestershire they work hand in hand together it, it's a fantastic opportunity for everybody involved I guess that's the key, isn't it? You know, it, it's to try and um, not break down the barrier because there's not necessarily a, a barrier there, but for people to associate the area with rugby league. And, and if you can do that and encourage people and for people to say, you know, I'm a rugby league you know, referee, administrator, whatever it is, and I want to go to uni, I'm going to go to Gloucester because they offer a good deal. Absolutely. I mean, I'm living proof of what the University of Gloucestershire can, can do for, for people in this area. I'm, I'm from Bristol, from primarily a rugby union area. I was brought to the university. I fell in love with rugby league and I will never look back. And there will be, uh, there will be thousands of people that can, can do the same. But also, we need those people from the Heartlands. We need, we need the, the guys that are born and bred rugby league boys to come down to Gloucestershire and teach the raw talent down here how to love the game and so if people are interested uh, if they want to find out more how do they do it oh it's very simple i mean you can go to to, to gloss.ac.uk uh have a look at the university website see the prospectus see what's on offer down here they can get in contact with myself at uh, our weber at gloss.ac.uk uh they can come on down go on to the 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 all golds website get our contact details phone us up and we'll answer every question that they have. And when you mention gloss.ac.uk, that's G-L-O-S, is that right? That's correct, yeah, gloss.ac.uk. And I had an email from uh, your chairman, uh, Lionel Hurst, this week as well, knowing that we were going to have a conversation to, to tell us, well, he, he put the subject, the golden future. Six-point little plan here of all things that are going well. It sounds like, um, you know, things are going well there. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we're making lots of strides, and... Uh, I suppose the biggest update is, is that our uh, university's second team, the All Blues, uh, they gained promotion into the uh, Bucks National Premier South uh, today after a, a 60-10 win over Oxford Brooks. Uh, so we now have our two university teams play at the highest level that, that they physically can uh, after our, our, our first team being national champions, our second team now being uh, Wales and West champions and promoted into the Premier South. Our under 16s played Salford last week um, when we when we played them in the Emmys Challenge Cup and beat them. Um, so that's a fantastic uh, uh, development for the game. We've got our under 20s that played Hemel under 20s on on Sunday as a curtain raiser to the, the Champ One game and once again uh, beat them as well. So there's so much going on in the area. We're about to launch a very exciting prospect at St Peter's High School in Gloucester. Uh, which we're calling our Centre of Rugby Excellence, which is our core programme. Uh, we've got the likes of Mike Cat uh, coming down to do guest coaching sessions. Brad Heppy, our head coach, is going to do it. it it's, there's so much going on, and, and everybody's just thriving on the sport of rugby league in this area, and it's fantastic to see. Well, I'm just going to go through a few of these uh, things from the list from, from Lionel on the email. You mentioned the under-16s beating Salford 56-0, uh, worth mentioning the scoreline as well. The under-20s uh, winning their opening game at Hemel, 34-30. And an interesting one, the last home match, there was 52 off-field staff, including stewards, ball crew, VIPs, hosts, etc. I mean, as I say, I use the word entourage, but I, I guess, you know, this is this is a big thing. There's a lot of people involved in what you're doing, which I guess for for a club of your size, really, is good to see. Uh, it's yeah. I, <laughs> I'm quite surprised you mentioned that. I, uh, it's uh, obviously it's it's something that we're we're working working towards. We we want people to see the golden fern of the all goals. We want them to think about excellence on and off the field of play. Off the field of play, we are certainly rising standard, raising standard every week. Uh, as you mentioned, we had 52 members of staff off the field at the uh, the Salford uh, game. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, and and that's something that's that's that we're building on every year. We've just hired a full time uh, event manager, along with uh, a, uh, a current police officer who's going to mentor her. We're we're all about giving 
people the opportunity to develop as, as rugby league administrators and uh, it's something that we're, we want to compete with the best of the best and that's not just on the field. We want to show people off the field what the All Gold is all about. And 853 spectators for the Salford game as well. I know it was a cup game on what a game too, but 853 must have been nice. Absolutely. I mean, who would have ever thought that, that, that just short of 900 people would turn up to watch a rugby league game in not only Gloucestershire but the South West? A lot of people two years ago would have laughed at us if we had said we were playing a Super League team in Cheltenham uh, and we've done it. It's it's incredible. I mean, as soon as the, the RFL told us that uh, we had the chance to switch to the City of Salford Stadium, it was a no-brainer. Of course we're going to bring the game to our area. I mean, it, it would be crazy not to. The fact that we've brought a Super League team to, to Cheltenham and we've had so many people support us, the amount of fans and the amount of coverage that we've got on the back of that game will it will see us through for the next five to ten years. I mean, the crowds are only going to build. They're going to build game on game, and, and along with that, the support and the enthusiasm for the game down here will only increase. And we're just we're, we're so excited about, as Lionel calls it, the golden future, and that's the way we see it. So I'll give you that email address again in just a second. But um, Robert actually popped out of the uh, University of Gloucestershire um, awards, like their end of year awards. They got some silverware too, which I've uh, just seen uh, on Twitter. So congratulations to them uh, for their silverware. And if you do want to contact Rob um, about the all golds, about the five thousand pound bursary uh, which they're offering the opportunity for rugby league players administrators or officials to go and study there and be involved in what the all golds are doing uh, the email address is rweber at gloss.ac.uk and gloss is in g-l-o-s um, so rweber at g-l-o-s dot a-c um, dot u-k um, and yeah hopefully we'll hear more from uh, the University of Gloucestershire All Golds for the rest of the season and things are going well at the moment a lot of people we've said haven't we with expansion clubs look at the, the first side or the first team and sort of judge what's happening by those results and uh, okay maybe in the championship one division at the moment University of Gloucestershire not having uh, the best of times but they say they're improving things are building and I'm sure very exciting things to come for them in the future and you'll hear all the latest here on Rugby League Down South now last week as well I was trying to catch up with the South Wales Scorpions winger at Dalton Grant didn't quite manage it in the end but we got in this week and they had their first home win as well at the weekend so it was a pretty good time to hold off they've now beaten Oxford and Rochdale as well in Championship 1 I've been catching up with the Welsh winger himself Dalton Grant yeah it was it was an excellent game actually um, obviously we took it to the wire we were winning um, and we thought obviously we closed the game off but Rochdale played well they come back second half um, but it was yeah we, we just uh, clinched at the last uh, second of the game so everyone's happy uh, we've had two games well wins on the bench so it looks like a good season for us well, I was going to say, I came down there for the um, for the Bank Holiday Monday game, uh, the, the Welsh derby, and you hadn't had a home win yet so far this year. I've done a lot of stuff with the London Broncos this year. They have just got a couple of home wins as well, back to back. What what sort of what sort of influence will that have on your season? I, I, is it a great platform to have them now? Yeah, um, it, is, it is a it is a great platform. Obviously, we're dueled with Wigan Warriors, so that's a great help for us uh, because obviously we got a young team. Um, like a lot of the Super League clubs are linked up with a lot of the championship clubs mm. and they're helping them out really well so the, the league has become a much more competitive league that's great for obviously Welsh rugby and rugby in general um, but I, um, personally I find the big help for, from um, obviously the dual contract with Wigan that's a massive help for us because our, like I said our team is very young and inexperienced when we come across uh, if our average age in our team is roughly about 23 mm. so when we play other teams you know we're playing um, experienced men who are about 26 so it does help quite a lot for that experience Do you find that you learn a lot from those dual reg players? Um, yes I um, for, well personally myself uh, I've I played I've played Super League myself so um, you know I, I'm on. I feel like I'm on the kind of the same path as them. Mm. But um, I spoke to obviously some of the younger boys, boys who haven't played in championship that much, and you know they do look at, look to them as a role model. And it also it inspires 
because that's the next step where um, the players want to go. So it is. I, I feel like it is a good, um, a good stepping stone there and a pathway. You mentioned you played Super League uh, with the Crusaders when they were sort of in, in South Wales. How, what, what do you make of the current situation w- with Rugby League in the area? Is it doing well? Has is, is the Crusaders moving caused too much turmoil? Um, I, I, with, with the Crusaders, it was, it was, it was an unlucky thing. Um, obviously, they were in the Super League. Um, well, really, they should have stayed in the Super League, but obviously stuff happened where they had to come down. Mm. Um, but they still, they, they still got a good structure out there as obviously because they were a previous Super League they still got good facilities good structure they got good following and I, I know that they've um, they still got a, um, some signing still like say this so they got a solid team I just feel like um, with with the Safe Wheel Scorpions they've tried to keep in more um, fast based players where I know obviously the Crusaders have um, they haven't got that much fast players so I, I'm happy that the, the Scorpions have kept it as a Welsh club you know we have got the odd um, players from England Scotland uh, Australia and stuff like that but we are a Welsh squad in the total so that's good for Wales Rugby League it's, it's kind of your unique selling point, isn't it, really? Because, you, you know, you yeah. do look at the squads and, and you really are, and this is no um, discredit or disservice to, to the North yeah. Wales side, but you are the Welsh side in, in that division, aren't you? Yeah, that's, that, yeah I, I, I find, obviously, North Wales is still, obviously, classed as a Welsh squad, but I do see that um, when we played our game, it was mentioned that um, we played, I think it was, I think we had something like 12 Welsh players playing in our team at the time. Yeah. And I, was, I don't know how much Welsh players... Uh, the Crusaders had the I don't think there was any I don't think there was any no no it wasn't and that's the whole point the reason why the Scorpions uh, became because obviously the um, rugby league wanted a Welsh squad and I think that's why they're still trying to try, to try for obviously good quality Welsh players playing for a Welsh club the program that I do, Dalton, sort of looks at the you know expansion areas and places where rugby league you know is, isn't maybe the the most popular or the the mainstream sport. Yeah. And you see different ways that clubs have done their sort of planning and their building and their expansion. Do you think that having a super league side in the area sort of helped grab the attention? And now that attention was grabbed, sort of going from Championship One and building up that way, it's kind of a sensible way of doing it rather than having to have sustained a super league side permanently while you sort of backfill. Yeah, I I understand what you mean. It would it would have been great for um, Wales to still have a Super League team because that's it's like then obviously then for both if we would have had um, two teams say say we had a Super League team in Wales and then we would have two Championship teams they would have been the feeder and that would have been you know like other areas have you know Rochdale have certain players London Scholars have uh, the Broncos yeah you know. That would have been perfect for us, but obviously, unfortunately, it hasn't happened. And it's it's a hard one because um, obviously it's perfect for us to have Wigan, but there's not really that much opportunity if you think that any of the boys are going to break into the the Wigan team. Obviously, that's you know it's one of the best teams yeah. to break into. So if you had a lower league, super league club, um, it might have been easier. Obviously, they might you might have seen more maybe of the. The, the good, the, you know, the better players from the Scorpions playing for maybe someone like Witness or something. If that was there, was Super League team. And personally, and also, go on, go sorry, on. no, no, go for it. Oh no, it's pretty sort. But it's, obviously, it's great to play against you know players from you know that experience and that high level. So that's the positive there. You got London Scholars uh, this weekend uh, in yes. Championship One. Um, they're they're a, a reasonable side this year. They haven't yet um, got a a win in the league at the moment. So whereas you have now uh, two to your name so far. Um, how, how do you sort of weigh up the Scholars this year? Um, well, when, obviously, when I was surprised they haven't had a win because um, obviously when we played them in our first um, first game, they did beat us in the Northern Rail Cup. Yeah. yeah in the Northern Wales Cup, and they did beat us, you know, fairly easy. So I was surprised that the uh, teams that we have beat, uh, beaten, you know, more of the the newer teams in the in the championship, uh, they've lost against. So that's maybe, and we're on a roll maybe with two wins. So I, I know I think our squad has come solid at the minute. So hopefully we can we can uh, take a win there. And what? And I think after this win, we uh, we if we do win, my opinion is if we do win against the Scholars. And I think we're, we're looking good for the season, maybe in the top four. 
It was a good chat with uh, Dawson, talked about a couple of other things as well off air with him. It's great to see things going well for him and the South Wales Scorpions. And again, you know, we, we talk about development. It's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a key word, isn't it? And uh, things uh, going well in, in the region. And, you know, it's, it's good to see that the South Wales Scorpions are doing their bit as well. You know, it's, it's, it's small, isn't it? It's an acorn, it's growing. Um, but things will happen. Um, I say things will, things are happening, aren't they? Um, and Dalton Grant telling us all about it as well. Now, I mentioned on Twitter um, when I was just coming to, to record the podcast, I uh, just finished work, I uh, jumped on the tube. I love having uh, Wi-Fi on the tube as well, which is, which is great. I managed to plan most of this Rugby League podcast uh, on one tube journey whilst on the ground for most of it, which was rather impressive because um, I mentioned that I was on my way back, didn't really have too much uh, sorted out. In fact, nothing um, in particular uh, sorted out for the programme. And um, one of the replies I had was from uh, Steve McCormack, former uh, witness coach and a Swinton coach and he's now teaching as part of a P department uh, at a school in Wigan but he mentioned that he'd seen a couple of sides a couple of school sides from the south um, doing rather well against uh, the, the school that he uh, is involved with so I said well, I'll tell you what you should come on the programme and you know we'll find out what you as the current Scotland head coach and former coach of Witness and Swinton uh, make of um, those schools that he's seen um, with r- his rugby league brain on so some good praise coming along here for anybody that's involved in uh, putting rugby league into schools in the south particularly in Colchester and also uh, Gloucestershire as well uh, this is then the uh, what uh, current Scotland head coach uh, Steve McCormack on his opinions of what's going on at the moment I'm looking after or helping uh, look after all the rugby side of the school and um, you know from the year 7 to year 11 uh, and that combined with me with Scotland um, head coaches who are also preparing aside for the World Cup um, it's an exciting time well, I mentioned on Twitter that I hadn't got too much stuff planned for um, for, for this programme, and you got in touch and said you'd seen some really good in, uh, performances from a couple of sides that I guess people a few years ago might not have thought so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a few weeks ago, our Year 10 side um, is quite a good side. They've done, uh, they've done it so well over the last couple of years. Uh, went, up, went down to Colchester Royal um, School in, um, in, in in the national competition, and you know, the, the setup down there, and the you know the way that, that we was treated by the parents, the teachers, uh, and everything was outstanding. And not only that, the performance from from some of the players and the actual team was, was outstanding. And uh, we actually got got a good pace team off went down there. It was um, it was tough. A lot of rugby union players in there, but you could just see the the work that's being done with the with the lads down there in the school and um, you know they're very successful so um, you know they're, they're an outstanding side and yesterday Chosen Hill School from Gloucester they came up and played against our year nines and again very inexperienced side as far as rugby is concerned but some outstanding talent I'm sure you're obviously an experienced coach, Steve, and you see these players. You know, a lot of coaches can tell that they've played rugby union before. You know, and, and they're rugby union players playing rugby league. But, but what impressed you about those players, and what, why did you sort of think that they they'd done a good job, so to speak? I think it was just the way the, 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 the well, the enthusiasm levels. First of all, I think that was that was outstanding in the discipline side, and it's obviously quite a new game to a lot of people um, outside the heartlands of. You know, of, of the northwest and and, and places like that, but you could just see they were obviously very athletic and, and very skillful. But you know, the, the little sides of the game, you know, the, the way they pass the ball, the way they kick the ball, and the tactical knowledge in which has obviously been ingrained ingrained in them by the by the teachers and you know, the development people down south. And it was just overall a, a very very good place to go. And, and you know, the facilities as well. You know, the facilities were outstanding. And you just think that the more young players we can get down there, both both girls and boys playing the game of rugby league, then I think there's some outstanding talent there. How does it make you feel when you, when you see sides that you know traditionally uh, wouldn't have played rugby league do well? Are you, are you one of the people that sees it as a, as a great thing for rugby league? Yeah, the more people can play rugby league, the better for me. Um, you know, I, I, when you go outside the, the Heartlands, and, and obviously we've, we've gone to France, and you know, a lot of work's been done in London, and you know places like Cumbria and, and Gates, and I've been fortunate to work at Gates as well. There's an awful lot of work goes on um, in and away from the northwest, and um, you know I, I did speak to the, uh, the the players of the Gloucester side yesterday of Chelsea Hillside after the game, and I didn't want to sound too patronising as far as saying you know you've done really well and you know you'll get better 
you know, I, I honestly meant every word I said to the players. There was there was an absolute credit, and you just feel as though if somebody can get hold of, of some of these players. I know there's a, an awful lot of, of work went on in in the south, and uh, you know the old goals, and you know other places like that, and the other the other teams in community, uh, the community clubs, and the you know, championship one, and, it, and it's just some outstanding talent. And, and if they can develop that, which I'm sure they will, um, I think some of these players will definitely come through. Well, we've mentioned it on the programme uh, a few times before, but the, the school aspect of the game in every area is so important because if you can get that right and you can get these players, you know, and, and these kids from a young age, boys and girls playing rugby league and getting them into the sport, you know, the options to progress and the options further down the line are much better. You know, just you obviously you've seen both sides. How crucial do you think that the school um, development is and, and the, the ingraining the game into schools in areas down in the south? It's massive. Um, I mean, first and foremost, as, as every teacher will say and every coach will say, it's it's about making these these young people better people as well as better players. And you know, I've been fortunate enough to, to be involved in the girls' game as well. And um, you know, and, and certainly my, my role is, is helping the, the school teams now at Edmund Dara Smith in Wigan. Um, you know, going to these places and going to the, the to, to all these schools, whether it's in Leeds or whether it's in Wigan or whether it is in Colchester or, or places like Gloucester, you know, if we can get get the, this game in, into the, the, the schools at an early age, I'm a big believer that once the players can can sample with the game and you know some of these players coming up and playing the the, the, the sides in Wigan, um, I, I think it's crucial to the game and the more people can do that and the more coaches we can get involved and there's some fantastic work. Um, going on, you know, outside the heartlands of rugby league, and um, I think sometimes it, uh, we don't bang the drum loud enough to, to to give these people the credit that they deserve. And we saw a great performance last year from Howard, Howard of Effingham, a Year 7 side that went on to win the, the Year 7 uh, Champion Schools competition, winning the game at Wembley before the, the challenge got final. And I get, it opened quite a lot of people's eyes, really. Uh, how does a Southern side winning in the North or beating Northerners come across to most? I, I guess most aren't happy. Um, I'm not sure about that. Obviously, uh, the teams like that get beaten are happy, but uh, f- from my point of view, and I, and I know from, from a school point of view, it, it was a shock. It was certainly a shock to our lads who went down to Colchester a few weeks ago. And you know, I think you all, always expect players who's been playing the game for for, for a long time, and players in uh, you know from some places like Wigan and St Helens that, that they're always going to have an advantage. But I think it was a big shock, and, and for for players and schools. Um, you know, in places like Oxford and, and, and Gloucester and Colchester uh, and other places down south, you just mentioned the Year 7 school there, that's fantastic for them. You know, there, there's some outstanding athletic, um, you know, young people knocking about it. I think if you give them a rugby ball and, and expose them to rugby league, then once they get a taste of playing this game, I think um, I think they'll stick to it and you know, that's only good for the game. And just thinking about it as well, you know, we've often talked about a generational thing in London with the fact that you've got to wait for that generation to turn over before you can really sort of invest a new bunch of fans and players because it, it takes that long for the game to generate. But if you've got kids in year 10 at the moment, which you're taking to Colchester for a, for a game of rugby league, you'd never have done that sort of 10 years ago. And these are guys that are going to grow up and are going to tell their families and tell their children that when they were at school, they went to play a rugby league game in Colchester. And that national branding, that national awareness of the sport will be, in a generational turn, the norm Well it takes time doesn't it, that, that's the thing, it does take time and sometimes we want a quick fix and you know the game you know, in, in London has been going on for an awful long time and you know, two or three years ago when I was at Swinton and I was in Championship 1 and there was a lot of skills competitions playing before our, our, um, our game against London Scholars and the standard there was fantastic and you know a lot of the, the, the Scholars players were going for the local skills a lot of the um, Super League players were going in there and again it's just leaving that little bit of legacy and, and want these players wanting to play the game of rugby league and not only that it was the parents as well I think they were was, they was surprised at how good a game rugby league is you know there's a lot of um, you know, rugby union um, based players down there and that's all they're used to playing um, but once uh, once they saw that once they get a taste of not only playing the game but being successful as well, you know, I said that some of their players were absolutely outstanding, and you know the way they conducted themselves, and um, just exposing them to rugby league, and then coming up to the, to the north and playing sides, and also being successful against well-known rugby schools, um, it's fantastic for them. And as a Scotland head coach, how special is 2013 with it being a rugby league World Cup year? Oh, it's brilliant. You know, I was 
really fortunate enough, not enough to be involved in the, in the Rugby League World Cup in 2008. And, um, you know, I never thought I'd personally get a chance to do this again. And to be involved in that and just to see the buzz around the game, whether it's in, in Super League, whether it's Championship, whether it's Amateur, whether it's Schools, there is certainly a buzz. And, you know, it's six months uh, now until the, the actual uh, competition starts. And you can just feel the, uh, the excitement building. And even yesterday, speaking to the, uh, you know, to the, the uh, Gloucester children, uh, you know, the athletes there who came up and played against us. Some of them are excited by that as well. And, and as you said, it's just making sure that, you know, they can see the, um, you know, the Rugby League World Cup and they get to some games and they get a chance to see the, uh, you know, what we've got to offer. And uh, it's a really exciting time to be, to be part of any sort of Rugby League at the moment. And just thinking about it, this is where your knowledge is going to far outweigh mine. I'm just trying to think of, of southern or southern-based players that you're going to have featuring p- potentially for, for Scotland at the end of the year. I, I, I'm stuck on um, Michael Robertson, uh, but I know there's a few more. Um, yeah, we have got a few more, actually. There's a few, uh, a few more come, um, come to, to, to light. You know, some of the academy players, some of the players who I know in the championship. And mm. You mentioned Michael Robertson. He, he was fantastic for us. You know, he'd just come off the back of... I think scoring three tries in a grand final for Manly yes, uh, yeah. in 2008, playing for us. And the way he he dealt with some of our younger players in, in camp was outstanding. And he was the first on the training field. He was the last person off the training field. And just having him in the camp for our younger players was superb. And, you know, I'd like to think Rob will, will, will come in and, and, uh, and play for us again this year, you know, depending on form and injury, etc. But people like Robbo and, and there's a couple more, there's, there's some outstanding players playing for the, the scholars and you know, some of the other players as well, you know, I'm looking at the Oxford side, I'm looking at the, the all goal side and there's some good players um, who's, who's, you know, making a, a little bit of a name for themselves in Championship 1. So, you know, I, I would never rule anybody out whether it's a domestic player playing in the Scottish League, whether it's a Championship player uh, or whether it's a Super League or NRL player. Um, you know, it's important that we can develop the game in all areas and and quite a few players are putting their hands up to play. Good chat with uh, Steve McCormack as well, and great to see he's uh, supporting things uh, that are happening as well. And, uh, uh, nice to know that you know the the, the efforts and you know these schools that are, that are achieving stuff is being noticed and and is being talked about. So uh, credit to um, the schools that Steve mentioned, and good to know that he's noticed it and I'm sure he's not the only one I'm sure there's many people along those lines so if you are involved in putting things into schools uh, within the uh, the south in terms of rugby league then uh, that should be a pat on the back shouldn't it and uh, good to hear Steve's thoughts about the um, well the future for Scotland as well but that's it then for rugby league down south for this week a bit shorter than we've had in uh, recent few weeks but it has been a bit chocker like I say promise to get you some Broncos material uh, in the next few weeks as well make sure we uh, bulk that bat up, back up but um, like I say been a bit busy at the moment so uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the programme and fingers crossed you join us next week again I mention every week there's been um, great feedback on the programme so far it's getting really good figures we've had some great reviews on iTunes as well so thank you if you're one of the ones um, who's gone to do that by all means keep in touch during the week uh, using the email address rldownsouth at gmail Dot com. Uh, you can tweet at Ian Ramsdale or use the hashtag RLDS. We'll get mo- loads of your uh, tweets and emails on next week on the programme. Do hope you can join me then.